Okay, squeaky game, let's get Wait, it. Okay, for what? Know, squeaky game is a game that's like with like fruit and, and you Son don't, of I don't know. Son of a it's biscuit. Okay, so Code so Bullet just released his squeaky video, meaning the opening in the market now has become a point of competition. And I guess I have to embrace that if my four step plan of epic success is to, well, succeed. Luckily, there are some differences in what I've been working on. Mainly that I'll be working in Python with Pygame as opposed to C Sharp and Unity. Mine will be 100% how to, showing all of my code, and I'll plan on doing headless training in the future AI video, meaning no display uh, being rendered. Okay, so now that I have justified this accidental piece of blatant plagiarism, let's get on with it. First up are the imports. Of these, the most important are Pygame, our engine, and PyMonk, our 2D physics. We initialize the game engine, we initialize a random number generator, and then we set up a bunch of constants. The size of the window, the padding of the game space to the window, the locations of the corners of the container for the fruit, some colors, the maximum number of frames per second, the size of the fruits, the thickness of the walls, the density of the fruits to calculate mass and inertia and stuff, Elasticity, that is how we handle the collisions. Do they stick together or do they bounce perfectly or somewhere in between? Impulse is the yield factor when we find a fruit to be inside another. Gravity, you know what it is. Damping, you know what it is. Next delay is how long there is between uh, placing fruits. Bias is how fast we resolve collisions and uh, Points are the scoring system for when fruit combines. Next up, the class for fruit. We call this particle. We need first a dictionary to look these up when a collision object from our physics engine spits out an attribute to the particle so we don't get the exact particle. So we make a mapper, uh, which we call shape to particle. But class of particles, the fruit class, we have an integer deciding the shape and we have the radius, the actual shape, we have a physics body, a physics shape, then we set the density, elasticity, a collision type, so we know if it's a fruit against the fruit or a fruit against the wall, then some friction, you know what that is, and has collided is a trigger to know whether or not a fruit can produce a game over if it flies out of the confines. We don't want a game over as soon as we will release the first fruit. Yes, we add the, the attribute key to the shape to particle object, our mapper object. We add the body and shape to the space and we set it to be alive. We define a draw function, a kill function and a position property. Next, we need the object before it's dropped. This is before it's actually handled by any physics. It only has a X position and a size. We define a draw function, we define a method to set the X position, and we define a release function, turning it into an actual physics object. Next, we define a wall class. It just has a thickness and some physics attributes, the body and the shape. And these are static objects. They don't move at all. And these are added to the physics space. We define a draw function, and that's it. Then we define a resolve collision function, resolving how we should handle the collision. First, we check are the fruit types the same? If they are, we calculate the distance. If they are touching, we kill those two particles and we create the merge particle, like the next size, right? And then we go for all particles that are still alive. We calculate if these are inside this new particle and if they are we yeet them very hard depending on how far inside they are and this is what is a lot of the annoying game over functions but we need it because now we do the final initializations before the game loop we initialize the screen and the clock some font functionality when we want to write the score and stuff the space and its attribute the walls and their positions and we make the particles list and also the game over variable have we died final thing before the game loop we make a handler for collision handling in here we get the shapes from an arbiter which is a physics object handling collisions internally we put them 
into the mapper and get the actual particles. We then check if these are of the same fruit type, because if they are not, we set collided to be true. But if they are the same, we then need to handle them with our resolve collision functions and create a new fruit. Finally, we do the game loop. We take the input events, like have we quit, have we pressed the key, have we pressed the mouse. We set the X position based on the mouse position. We check if we need to wait, if we have just released a fruit. We then do the display functions. We fill the screen with the background color. We determine if we need to display the next particle, a pre-particle. We display the walls, the particles, and we display uh, game over if the game is over and we display the scores. Then we do the steps for the physics engine and the display update of the game engine uh, and we tick the clock. And this is basically it. This is the whole game loop. Finally, we do a short game over loop, keeping the window open with the game over display and then only allowing for quitting. And that's it. See you in the next one.